Okay, thank you. So, hello everyone. Uh, we are uh, at the junction of a very important uh, announcement here. But before we announce the finalists, we are going to say just a few words before that, some organizational stuff, and of course we are going to announce the finalists as soon as possible. Yeah, so as you already know, uh, the data on continues. And uh, just to give you a brief summary up, up to now, we have 30, 30 mentors who participate and spend time together with us. Yeah, I'm a little bit, uh, I mean, I was expecting more of each member, of each one of you. I don't know why you spoiled them so much, but they were here. You some should have bothered them more. And they know a lot. Uh, then we have five cases. Uh, all of you know them, and it's a, it, it was a great. So we have 140 participants, which we already mentioned. This is for those of you who already know that. We are just repeating for the streaming and for the online stuff. And uh, there were something which you don't know, 25 teams, 25 great solutions. And uh, we see uh, that for some of you, that's, that was your first article, first masterpiece. And uh, now we have five semi uh, six yes. semi-final groups. It's a print error. It's a print. It's a six semi-final groups. Yeah, it's an error. So <laughs> this is six. And now uh, the first group. First group, the semi-final group A. It's uh, A is just arbitrary. So no, no, no importance of the uh, uh, consequence sequence. So the jury there is uh, were Metodi Nikov, Valentin Tonev, and Tomislav Krijan. All of them are as follows. Methodi is from Data Science Society. Valentin is from the, from the company, uh, Valentin Tanev, sorry. Uh, he's from Tele, Telenor, he's an industry expert. And Tomislav is uh, one of our mentors. The team were as follows, Grenadiers, Team Spectrum, da Data Titans, and Change Makers. And the winner of the group and the finalist from this group is Team Spectrum. Yoohoo! Good job, guys. <laughs> So this is our first finalist. Next one. The next group, yeah. The next group, uh, group B, on the Telenor case. Uh, the jury was Liat. Uh, he is uh, our mentor. Peter Nikov from the Data Science Society and uh, Svetoslav, who's our industry expert. And the teams were Team Seven, Five Blind Scientists, Wild Links, Data Crunchers. All of, they, all of these guys, by the way, all, most of these guys are, by the way, from India, I think, or all of them. And the winner, five blind scientists. <laughs> Good job, guys. See you on the final. Be ready with your presentations. Okay, group C, it's working on the Air, Sophia, uh, air Quality Sophia, <laughs> Air Sophia case. Sponsored by Telling and helped by Dan Shat as well. Uh, the jury was Boriana uh, from, uh, she's our, uh, our mentor. Angio Marchev is Data Science Society. Uh, so that is you. This so is me. Yeah. One of the best. Yeah. <laughs> and Ekaterina is the industry expert there from Telling. The teams were the Calicious, the Urban Air, Air Quality Gurus, and something unpronounceable. I'm, I'm going Talia to try. Penos. Talia Penos. And the winners are the Urban Air Quality Gurus. <laughs> I think they're here, right? Yes, are they here? OK, probably not. All right, semi-final group D. Jury is the Ma Michael. He is the, he is, uh, sorry, it's Michael, the correct pronunciation. Uh, he is from Kaufland. He's the uh, Pencho will come to him as a Data Science Society member, and Simon is the mentor. <laughs> Teams, by the way, Dubrina is again uh, ha happening as a Dubrina a team name. Last, uh, last time in the Datatone, we also called them Dubrina because they failed to give their proper name. So it's going to be Dubrina, it's your destiny, guys. It's, it's like a brand now. Yeah, it's a brand now, yeah. So Dubrina, Fiction, Team 3, Alex in Kaput, and Katz Cradle. And. Uh, the way, by the way, first of all, this has been one of the most contested uh, group, you know, a lot of uh, competition there. So the winners are Katz Cradle Group. Good job. 
Yeah. I'll see you in just a few minutes in the finals. Now okay. the next group is Group E. All right. They work on go, go ahead. yeah on the NS, uh, on the National Statistical Institute case. We have uh, Svet Svetuslav, so he's from the National Statistical Institute. We have Laura, she's here. She's a, from Data Science Society representative. And we have Georgi Mito, so he's uh, our a, yeah he's also our mentor from Data Science Society. So we have three three teams. Uh, the first one is pigeons. Ah, matchmaking works. Yeah, it works at least here. <laughs> so we have pigeons. We have mim mim minions. 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 Mim ah, minions. Okay, and lemurs. So, and the finalist is the minions. Yeah. <laughs> I think if I recall correctly, these are the guys from Malaysia. If I if I recall correctly. I Okay. Or, or, or sorry, or India. Sorry. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But they're foreigners for me. Okay. Then we have again, uh, again uh, Telelink. At the last minute, uh, we had to actually, I will have to explain this. Uh, there was a team that actually su have, have not uh, submitted anything yesterday, but they submitted a uh, solution this morning. And we had a quick discussion with the uh, mentors internally, and we decided to let them participate. So we had to split the initially uh, group C, which was initially a five people, uh, five teams. We had to split them in two, so because it had become six teams. So this is why we ended up with another new sixth group. And here we have the jury. Alexander Efremov is a guy and uh, one of the engines behind Data Science Society. We have Dr. Pau. Uh, sorry, sorry, Dr. Pao, but I cannot pronounce your first name. Sorry for that. Yeah, Subha Bakawa. Okay, so almost, almost. Okay. Uh, but anyway, you've yeah. been uh, a great help for us here, and Ivan Ivan Paspaljev is the guy from uh, from uh, Denstadt who helped us with the uh, with the case because he is the industry expert. The and, teams and, were and Ivan, just to add for him that now he's supposed to drive, so I don't know how he managed to drive and vote, but yeah. yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah, he was <laughs> somewhere else. So the teams here are Riddles and Answers, Midas, and Telenerds, and the winners are, and the final fi finalists are, eh, hey, Midas. Midas. <laughs> so this basically means we have six finalists, and they should right now try to st start to prepare their presentation. So in few minutes they are going to have a chance to speak live in front of the world about their case. And something which we want to thank to each one of you is uh, that what you did was, uh, was a great job. So applause for, for all of you. So great job to ev every team that participated, even the ones that gave up and said oh, it's too hard for me, you're still our heroes. And we, we know that for these two days uh, you learn a lot and uh, make a lot of contacts. So what follows? These are the, f the six teams. So now we will, uh, we'll, we will make a hangout. Uh, it, it will start in 10 minutes. Uh, on the, the order will be based on, on the groups which we form. Uh, the information which, was, which was, by the way, it was random. Yeah. The, the order was random of the groups. So. Yes, and uh, the information is going to be shared on general channel on the data chat. Uh, also, uh, the link, the link for the hangout. So please, those of you who are participant and who will will present uh, their cases to log in there because hangout have some limitations. Uh, and uh, about the about the presentations, we expect you to walk through your solution in three minutes. Try to impress us. Don't tr don't go into many details about the code or about particular function. We share use. your screen. You sh share your screen so that we can see. Yeah, uh, we know the three minutes is very limited time, but uh, do your best. Uh, and then we will have two minutes for questions. We will look into the general channel and also into the YouTube channel. So all the participants who are not part of the data or are, are not me member of the data science platform can raise their question on the YouTube channel. Uh, the first questions which we will uh, post are the questions from the mentors. And then if there are others, we will look into the YouTube channel and into the general channel from the, uh, from the members. 
and uh, what follows after, after that uh, there will be a time for the jury for the final uh, for the jury to think about and, and vote for the uh, for the cases uh, this time should be over by okay there are three times we already got used to this uh, <laughs> drill 17 17 30 hundred hours in Bulgaria 20 so 8 p.m. in India and uh, 2 30 UTC time is when we are going to pronounce the winner yeah and the closing ceremony okay so now stay tuned uh, we will start in uh, uh, with 10 uh, in 10 minutes with uh, team spectrum and yeah let's let's let's, let's uh, give the uh, if you have not heard it team spectrum is first uh, five blind scientists are second the urban air quality gurus are third uh, cats cradle are fourth uh, minions are fifth and midas are sixth and by the way who are here they can use this uh, space yes they can uh, we need to find we need to find a solution with the string okay okay but this is, this is the order Okay, so uh, because we will have time probably for the locals if they want uh, to present it here, uh, we can put them last one just just in order to be able to handle the the last minute requests. Okay. Okay, so let's start. All right, ten minutes to prepare our presentations. Hopefully, you, uh, you don't need more. Okay, perfect. So my name is Rado, I'm from Team Midas, and we worked on the Talonlink case where we wanted to forecast how dirty the air around Sophie would be in the next 24 hours. And that's something we've been working on for two days now. And if I can manage to share my screen, I could show you what we've done. Just one second. Someone can help me. This is Mel over there. Since I've never used Google Hangouts before, I'd love some help with this. How do you share a screen? Um, I'd love some pointers. Let's try this button. All right, can you see the screen now? Hope everyone can see the screen. This is our article on the Data Science website. It's called Telelink Case Solution from Team Midas. And these are the names of all the members. You can contact these members at any time during this presentation to ask any questions, and they'll be happy to answer. Okay, so. Main thing, the workflow was done mostly on GitHub, where we uploaded our files and structured them according to the CRISP DM cross industry standard for data mining projects structure. We have a data folder, we have a business understanding folder, data understanding, which was took a lot of our time. Then we have data preparation for modeling, actual modeling, project evaluation, some words on a deployment scheme, how this whole thing can be deployed in practice and what needs to be done in order to get good results. Yeah, so we can start one by one. First thing is the business understanding. It's basically the description of the problem. As I said, we want to forecast the particulate matter 10 atmospheric conditions for the next 24 hours. And we have two general sources for this thing. First thing is from the official measurement stations in Sofia. There are five of them, although one of them was decommissioned for a long time. And we have a, an array of uh, hobbyist tiny measurement stations, which have been popping up over the last couple of years. I want to see if we can use these in order to make a better prediction for the future, to have more stations in general. Okay. Data understanding is where we have the actual data. The EA data, EEA, is the data set with the official stations. It contains five stations with a total of over 8,000 observations, 8,000 days. This is what the data set looks like, PM10. 
over the first year, for example, since 2013, we see that at the start of the year, it's slightly high, then tapers off during the summer, and something very horrible happens at the start of winter. And this, this pattern repeats over the years, with 2015 becoming even worse. Then we have the AirTube data set, which has a lot more unique unique individual stations, which try to monitor the same number. P1 is particulate matter 10 in this case. What we've done is we've taken all of the air data data set and we've made a interactive visualization on what happens over the year. And we can see that it's definitely some, in some way seasonal. What we're seeing here is a GIF animation of what's happening. Right, and our GitHub repository actually has a link to an interactive version of this map. Good. This is another measurement, and these are only the days in this short time period where the threshold is above what is above what is the standard for being healthy, like 50 micrograms per cubic meter. And we can see that there's quite a lot of red in this map, and this is, this is all information from the individual stations, the hobbyist stations. Of course, we wanted to see how reliable this data actually is, and what we, we, did, we did very many visualizations, but the data is at best a little dodgy. What we see here in this visualization is a bar chart or line chart of the temperature readings from these machines, while the official data is relatively good and with high quality. Here we see that there's very, very many inconsistencies with most measurements being minus 150 degrees Celsius, which is uh, hopefully not a, an accurate measurement. And it's a challenge to actually find these individual measurements for all the variables we have and to clean them up in order to do something. Good. Next data set is the meteorological data. It contains better quality data on the temperatures as shown in these plots. And we actually opt to use these temperatures as a standard average meteorological information for all of our individual stations. Good, we have a dew point temperature, more visualizations, wind speed is also good. Overall, this data set is very usable for this. Good, the next part is the data preparation. We know what our observations are and one main problem we stumble into is that the data is has a different granularity we, for example some data has one daily measurement from, for example from the official stations or from some of the hobbyist stations other data has several measurements per day and this has to be combined in order to make something usable in the end what we do is we aggregate each station per day in order to arrive at average values for all of, their, all of their measurements, be it PM10 or anything else. That's what we do for all, da for all data, and we use this, this average PM10 as our target variable in modeling later. Good. We also did some other work on, on, on some feature engineering. Mainly, we discovered all Bulgarian holiday data. We managed to import this into a data set, and we discerned long weekends which tell us when Sophie, people in Sofia are likely to, to leave the city. This can be used then for enriching the data set. The actual modeling part is something that we couldn't complete fully. But, but we could, what we did is we separated the models in, in two approaches. The first thing is an, an ensemble approach. That is, we have in total 650 unique measurement units that is both the air data quality set and the official sources. And we can make in a largely automated ma manner a model for each individual station, which tries to predict the following day. At the end of the day, we aggregate this result not, and weigh the predictions based on how accurate the model for each individual model is. And we arrive at an actual prediction for Sophia. Or we can just, if someone wants more granular data, you can know what will be the future PM10 values for some station, for some region. To, to do this, we have several types of models. Bas we basically standard statistical models, a naive model, which says tomorrow is the same as today. This is sort of a baseline, which we want to improve upon. 
Then we have an ARIMA, autoregressive integrated moving average model with no external variables, and another version with external variables. You can also do a single model approach, which is other statistical models, which combine spatial data and geographical data into a single prediction. And this is what's commonly referred to as panel regression. And something that we could do is a fixed effects or random effects model, which manages to, which so to say, it compares the deviation of some measurement compared to the average measurements of this same station over time. We can also aggregate these results in the end, but the bonus here is that we have a single model instead of 650 individual models, and there's greater room for improvement upon that single model. We also managed to make a simple linear regression on the model just to see without any time considerations what, how good the model would be. And we arrived at an R square of 28%, which is expected for a model that does not take into account any ultra aggressive characteristics of the model. But sadly, we did not have time to implement all of the models, and we do not have as such uh, accurate measures for those models. If we did, we would use the following evaluation metrics in order to see which model is good. Since we have time series data, we can't just use an R squared or something like that. To, come to show how good the models are. So we have several accuracy measures which can be used in order to see how good the models are. And, fi and finally, a deployment from this situation would require that we have data in real time as well as weather forecast data which could be done via any online API. And, an and another thing as far as future improvements is that there is no, yes? Uh, yes, uh, this is basically the end. What I want, last thing I want to say is that uh, one glaring lack in the data available for Sophia is that there is no historical data for traffic congestion, which we know is one of the main contributors for particulate matter 10 pollution. And if we cannot add this, our model will not be able to measure it. Something that needs to be done and needs to be measured needs to be made public so that teams like the research people or companies can use the data in order to make our lives better so that we know how dirty the city will be and to do something about it. And this is everything from us. A lot of potential, it was a very fun model and I want to thank my teammates for all their contributions. It was a great experience and I hope it's like that for all of the rest of you. Thank you. I'm open for questions if anyone has any. Don't know where to find them though. If you ask in the data chat here in the. Mm -hmm. uh. Thank you. Thank you. Well, R2 isn't really properly defined for time series data. That's uh, the main issue we have. It's basically, this I can't really go into the details of the formulas, but it just doesn't work properly. I can see a question in Hangouts, but it disappeared. Let's figure out how to get back to it. it.
One second. Which metric did you optimize for? Asked Preswav Nakov. You mentioned four metrics. The four metrics are really quite, they're the same thing, just measured in different ways and the different metrics do a better job of handling variation within the data. These are really standard metrics used in time series analysis, mostly one which is most understandable is the mean absolute error. We just want to see what the mean error is in absolute terms. In this way, we remove negative errors as in we compare the prediction relative to the actual value in absolute terms and get the mean from that. We would look at each metric individually because they tell us different things. Sadly, since we did not manage to complete the modeling process, we can't really make an evaluation of which metric is the most appropriate and whether one of the metrics tells us that some, there's something wrong in the data. For example, the second one in absolute percentage error transforms the previous one in percents. However, it's really unstable if you have observations near zero. So we have know that there's a problem if we do not expect to have zero observations, but there are. However, in this case, it's good when there are actually, when there are zero micrograms per cubic meter of air of particulate matter 10. So MAPE would not be appropriate for this case. If, however, we had a lot of variation, the root mean squared error would be a better, a better thing to optimize for than the mean absolute error. Just depends on the result. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, okay, can you, uh, can, are you audible? Yeah. Uh, thank you much. Uh, sorry for the delay, uh, delay last time. Uh, so we'll just start with our presentation. We'll directly go to the start. Yeah. So uh, basically, we were uh, doing time series analysis on uh, Telnor data set, uh, which we are very kind of uh, Telnor company to share with us. Uh, so uh, the first thing we did was uh, pre-processing plan uh, part, wherein uh, we uh, we checked uh, what's the dimensions of uh, what's the dimensions of data set, what's the string type, uh, how how is each what does each column represents and what does each row represents what's the granularity of the data set and the basic thing we found was that each row represents the uh, fail uh, fails of uh, different types of fails uh, for each networks and each family member and uh, each uh, um, each family Right. Uh, uh, the second thing we did uh, in EDA part was go through the EDA tasks which were given. Uh, given uh, the namely, they were uh, top ten ravens with fails. Uh, with fails. Uh, we got this graph in which. Uh, uh, two one eight three seven two of brass raven birdie came at the top so uh, the top uh, the 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 largest number of failed happened in brass raven birdie uh, birdie 
after that uh, we went to top 10 without fails uh, so what pre processing we did was we considered that uh, each uh, in each row not a single uh, not a single delay has happened in each row and through this we got me, uh, metallic sunburst revi poly as the uh, highest with uh, highest raven which was without fails uh, then we went to fa uh, family with most and least fails uh, of course uh, because uh, tar uh, targaryen has the highest number of uh, family members <laughs> they uh, we got around 487966 uh, of fails in those family and the single most was peter belish uh, and family number with least fails we got was uh, benjen uh, i think he is from the stark family background and uh, the least failed was euron uh for the analysis part uh, we did through uh, arima testing and we also did further testing on uh, our, uh, we used rnn uh, neural networks to do further testing the uh, pre processing which we did was uh, we removed uh, we removed the data which has all zero means uh, we only considered the uh, rows which had Uh, which in which all the rows had uh, in uh, we removed all the rows which had zero values uh, we re removed all uh, rows which had all the values as zero so effectively we are calculating yes please oh one more minute okay uh, so uh, we removed uh, all rows with all zeros and uh, for uh, further uh, arithmetic test uh, to do further arithmetic test uh, we calculate the first uh, stationary is that stationary or non stationary uh, th uh, through adf tests and uh, once we confirm that it's uh, it's a stationary uh, then we uh, cal uh, we do we did we calculated pq pdq values Uh, the range of values for uh, p and q was 0 0 1 2 uh, for p it was 1 2 uh, uh, conditions for uh, q it was uh, again 1 2 and we checked for each of the pqd uh, pdq values combination of that and we calculated the optimum uh, the optimum uh, pqd value which we uh, which we would get over here we calculated aic and we got the uh, even we checked it uh, we did with auto arima even there we got the optimum value as uh, 102 we uh, ran the uh, we ran our model for 102 and we got this graph uh, arima graph uh, on for further test uh, uh, and when we saw the graph uh, for the prediction part uh, Uh, for prediction part we needed to do further analysis and we need to uh, have uh, further predicted values so we conducted a rn rnn uh, neural network uh, model uh, we tested on that and we got this as our predicted output uh, and uh, this was date time and the next we did was separately for day different dates and the graph which we got Uh, the output which we got was uh, this for if we consider only date earlier we used both date and time in here we only used date and predicted for next four values yeah okay uh pardon can you repeat it once again uh no uh, we are we are uh, we are almost done we are done yeah
Ya, dia. Thank you very much. Hi. Can you hear us? Yeah. Yeah. It's in you. Okay. Now it is your turn. No, others are there. Okay. Um, I'm uh, muted. No, no, I shot. Oh. Right. Uh, hi. Uh, we are Cats Credo. Um, we have selected Coughland IoT data as our challenge. Uh, so the case of uh, the title of our solution is LSTM and EDM models for predictive maintenance. So let's start with uh, business understanding. Um, Given the tasks uh, we tried for the past two days, we tried to develop a predictive maintenance use case uh, to, to try to avoid. So uh, we came up with a very simple, simple uh, project plan, which uh, started with data preparation. After, after that, uh, it's some experts. After that, we try to build some models and uh, we come up with some ideas that we can deploy. Um, basically, the, this data set is about uh, IoT sensors that are installed on uh, forklifts, which is used in uh, Kaufland's warehouses. Here you can see that we have done some, actually we spent a lot of time uh, looking at the data, trying to understand uh, the patterns. So uh, an example of data visualization here is, for example, we try to plot a scatter plot of the values across sensors and we did some uh, correlation analysis basically so yeah prior to modeling we tried to do some transformation on our data set as well as you can see uh, the full data set is actually uh, it contains four million rows and what basically we did here is uh, the time conversion uh, data aggregation by uh, one minute we try different different aggregation for example by hour uh, by few minutes and we try to group uh, some of the sensors uh, as a cluster after that we uh, try to remove outliers from our data set uh, to prepare that as our training set for modeling and we also um, compute moving variance uh, for our models as well so uh, here we propose uh, two approach of the prediction modeling. So the um, the first up approach we are because we don't have a level, so we we predict the next we um, so we have a ten windows. We we predict the the eleven value. So then we check the loss of the prediction with the actual the actual value. Then if the value is high, then we can consider that as an anomaly. So the weakness of this um, method is sometimes it captures uh, noise, um, such as this one. You have a lot of noise. So because of this, uh, we propose a second method, which is by considering um, a moving variance. Uh, as you see from this graph, so here that we assume this pattern is um, a normal data, which is, uh, and this pattern here is um, abnormal data. So after we do a mean, um, sorry, um, moving variance, 
we get a pattern like this. So from here, we set a cutoff point uh, into uh, 0 0.05, and we, we label it as 0. And above that, I, we, we label it as 1. And then we, we build model on LSTM. Uh, and then we uh, then this is the prediction result, which is quite accurate and also noise prone. And we 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 train on the uh, machine two to machine seven, and then we do a prediction on machine one. The prediction, which is quite good, you have achieved accuracy of zero point nine and F ninety five. And then we try a second um, model based on the second um, proposed method. So for this one, we train on the whole um, data from either wheel, and then we, we, we try to predict um, the anomaly of uh, lifting motor and drive wheel. So it works quite well, and we achieve quite high accuracy on this. OK. Um, OK. All right. Um, so basically, uh, apart from this classification classification task, we complement our analysis with a breakout detection. So basically, breakout detection is about um, finding out the cutting point where there's a shift in distribution or mean. Uh, on the okay, we have an example here on the left. If we are using visual inspection, we can clearly see that uh, there's different segments in the time series which is likely coming from different distribution. And how do we automate this? Because in the actual business, in the business scenario, we would want to alert the operators of the machines that, OK, uh, your sensors is telling us that uh, there's a shift in the mean for the past, uh, let's say, past window of uh, maybe 10 minutes. Um, it's uh, the, the good thing is it shows you the it alerts, alerts you about the gradual transition uh, instead of uh, when the anomaly event actually occurs. So on the right, we fit our data with this uh, e-divisive e with media's method, EDM, and we are quite happy with the results. OK. Uh, then let's move on to deployment. So um, for the so we can actually do a real time prediction. So for the deployment of the model, okay. for the deployment number one, we can capture the eleven, uh, 11 minute of data. Then we train, uh, we predict the ten minute, the first ten minute. And then for the 11 minute, we use to compare our prediction value at the 11 minute. So if the value is above the threshold, then we can classify them as anomaly. If below, then no anomaly. So the, for the second model, is we collect 70 minutes of the data first, and then we do a moving variance of uh, 60 minute windows. And then that 60 minute you put into a prediction, and then the output is one is anomaly and zero is not anomaly. So uh, that yeah, that's basically uh, our proof of concept for this uh, IoT predictive maintenance use case. Yeah. Um, LSD, uh, it's a recurrent neural network is used to uh, it's very effective for doing a forecasting and that's why we are cho choosing LSTM 
the reason why we don't use ARIMA is because after we perform a spectral analysis, we don't see any um, seasonality patterns and um, trends and cy cyclic. So, yeah, and EDM? Okay, uh, so EDM is basically a statistical technique that is uh, it's actually something unsupervised. Uh, they deploy something called uh, energy statistics to try to detect mean shift or changes in distribution across a time series. Are we done? Sorry. Yes. Ah, uh, minion. Okay, yeah. So, uh, so our entire coding is done in R and Python. So for visualization, we use those uh, those common uh, Python and R packages. For example, ggplot. Uh, for Python, we use Cborn and Mapton. Yeah. Uh, can you see our screen? Yeah, just a second. Uh, just a second. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Now go to yeah. Now can you see yeah.
Hello. Do you hear me? Yeah, we are ready. Yeah, okay. Um, our topic, uh, we worked on the household budget uh, survey prediction and uh, we started with uh, identifying uh, the major significant factors that affect the expenditure uh, in Bulgaria. So we started with uh, a linear model and we identified a few features which uh, affect the expenditure majorly. So here in raw data, we could see that uh, the food and non-alcoholic beverages um, is where the most expenditure is made. And uh, then second is the housing, water, electricity, gas, and other fuels. And the next is uh, the taxes. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Just this. I have a quite complicated uh, setup here, so I'll be quite quick with our presentation. And uh, for even more uh, so, because uh, one of the previous speakers explained it quite well. Uh, Uh, okay, the case was about uh, the air quality in uh, Sofia and uh, the discrepancies in, in a sense because uh, the official stations are only five and uh, there are quite a lot more unofficial stations uh, provided, data provided from citizens which uh, using uh, some kind of uh, setup. It, it's a, as, as we could uh, uh, find out it, it's the same model, I think, but uh, they're quite different uh, instruments and uh, there are some discrepancies in the data. So our, our task was quite simple, <laughs> in a sense, <laughs> just to find the uh, differences from the main stations and uh, to predict the weather in 24 hour horizon. As everything simple, it turns out to be quite a complicated task, uh, mainly because no one from the team had any experience with uh, geodata and uh, a simple uh, time series has from two dimensions to four. So it was quite complicated and uh, it took us quite a lot of time to prepare the data itself. And uh, we weren't able to finish the task, but the ideas 
we had <laughs> yeah so uh just a sec i'll i'll try uh this is the jupyter notebook that you can see in fact uh, with our article we we started with uh setting up the needed modules our our main idea was that uh, we had to plot these stations uh, on the map just to see where it, they were and uh, just to get a basic idea uh, how we can continue. Because although we knew uh, that uh, every sensor, in fact, is, uh, could be uh, predicted, the values could be predicted with a RIMA model, it was quite different, difficult to um, visualize the positions of uh, the, this data and which, this was quite uh, specific in a sense domain knowledge that we had to acquire very fast uh, so we started with uh, preparing the different stations and uh, during our cleaning up and preparing the data we found out that uh, we were provided with quite a lot more user provided data than uh, it was uh, initially thought. In fact, the stations were 1,260, and uh, these are the citizen-provided stations, but they were uh, in Bulgaria as a whole. I mean, in Sofia, there were only 622. We, we decided to, to just make a square and say that this is around Sofia. And it was quite arbitrary decision, but uh, it worked and it was quite simple to implement. We used a filter to filter out those stations that do not belong in this uh, um, range. So after that, we continued with the preparation of the data. There was some more cleaning up to do in the different stations. Uh, while we were working on the, on the data itself, here you can see, in fact, the different stations and uh, the user provided ones. It was quite easy to plot them after we, we uh, managed to clean the data enough. Uh, at the, the case itself had three uh, levels of difficulty when with the last one uh, being uh, generating a live map in a sense of Sofia. So because we're using Python, we decided to go, go out with the tools provided by the language one of which is uh, defining a class with all the data information. We had this plan because uh, it, if we had enough time, we could provide the solution, like a web page or something. Uh, sadly, we weren't able to finish the project on time. Uh, in a sense, because our knowledge was quite limited, uh, especially for these kind of data problems. Nevertheless, we managed to, to create this class, which uh, in fact provided with the data, with the clean data, could be used to uh, find all the user stations around a particular one with geohashes. Uh, we also uh, found out the distance from every citizen provided data to the nearest uh, main official data station. And uh, here we can see if this is uh, within the borders. We also decided that uh, the user stations provided by uh, citizens with less than the median number of observations are not um, credible enough, in a sense, to do an analysis further. After that, we, we managed to create some tools that could easily provide us with information, for example, for all the stations around uh, 1.5 kilometers from the base station. And based on this information, uh, we had the tools so that we can uh, find near uh, statistics for all these stations, which included P1, which here stands for a particular matter of 10 micrometers and the humidity. Uh, Sadly, yeah, just a second. Here you can see the histograms for these data sets. Uh, 
uh, some closing words. Uh, if we had another week, maybe we could do better, but uh, this is a good starting point for further analysis. That's, that's all for us. Um, we will start with the uh, linear model that we uh, did. Okay. Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, I saw the question. Uh, Maybe a little bit different in a sense that uh, there will be quite more preparation beforehand, just so that uh, I could be more familiar with the matter uh, for this geo data. Because there are quite a lot of tools, but still you have to know quite a lot so that you can use them appropriately. Otherwise, the steps are quite clear. I mean, you have to clean the data, you have to plot the data. You have to find the bias and then forecast the data with almost certainly some kind of a RIMA model, a RIMA X model because of the seasonality of the of main factors that determine the um, pollution here. That That's all, all everything that I can say. Okay. In fact, we we started to uh, research a way to get the elevation of the sensors itself. Uh, so that we can have more information because a sensor which is placed uh, near the, the ground level, especially around uh, uh, major uh, streets, it's quite possible that uh, which, which, uh, it will show more pollution than something that is, uh, for example, uh, on the stand floor of a building. So we, we tried to get this data, but uh, it turned out to be quite complicated. And uh, we were pressured by time. Uh, for the free data, uh, rows of winds which will be quite useful, in fact, for Sofia especially. Uh, and also the wind patterns, different wind patterns. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure that this is enough <laughs> for an answer, but that's, that's what we were looking into, if we had the time. Thank you.
Sorry? Yeah. yeah, sure. Can you see our screen? So our first approach was uh, to predict the uh, total expenditure, consumer expenditure and non-consumer expenditure based on the significant criteria or factors that we have found out using EDA. We did uh, uh, linear regression. We used linear regression model to find uh, to find out the correlation and uh, the linearity between the uh, expenditure and the other uh, significant features. So we listed down these features. Then we applied time series linear model. So since we had uh, multiple uh, significant features. So, we use the time series linear model to predict uh, the expenditure for uh, 2016 and 17 that is in our uh, test data. So, here we can see that uh, the, there is an increase in expenditure and the predicted value. Here is for 2000. As the original data which we did, and this is for 2008. This is for uh, the total expenditure. Then we used the subgroups as well. Uh, so there was uh, consumer expenditure and uh, non consumer expenditure mm -hmm. as the subgroup. So there we used uh, the same features that we extracted in EDA, and uh, then now uh, we predicted again. So here also. We found almost the accurate prediction, and uh, there's a much similarity between uh, the original data and the predicted data. And same is for the non-consumer expenditure as well. And uh, the second approach uh, we, which uh, we used was to use the quarterly data. The first approach was uh, we used it for uh, prediction, like uh, yearly based prediction. Now the second approach is the quarterly based uh, prediction. So Yash will continue with that. So uh, in the second approach, we took all the quarterly basis for every year and we found the some, uh, we found the predict features, so like total expenditure, uh, and the consumer expenditure and so on. The significant factors that we found, which is dependent, like uh, which is dependent on income as such, average pension, wages and salaries, like uh, all these uh, uh, these things, these are a significant factor that is affecting the expenditures. So after when we applied uh, this uh, uh, forecast regression model, like time series regression model, we found out that uh, we use test data from 2010 quarter 1 to 2016, 2015 quarter 4, and uh, we took a test data 2016 to 2017. So we found uh, this these uh, predictive values for uh, two years, for 16 for 17. And if we compare this data with the original data, like 16 and 17, which were given, it's almost similar and uh, almost uh, approximate. And as you can see. With this data, um, uh, yeah, the factors that we can see is okay. The second thing, what we got, we took for yeah, consumer expenditure against year wise quarters, and we found that the following expenditures, like following the uh, descriptions, like uh, the graph represents linearity in trends that people's expenditure is always high compared to fourth quarter as you can see from here this is the first quarter and this is the fourth, fourth quarter of the year so there is a gradual rise from first quarter to fourth quarter that is mainly because of the expenditure in third quarter is completely high because of Tokyo restaurant week that is held in September as the expenditure of food and non-beverages is more as compared to alcoholic beverages 
the same thing we found out for uh, non consumer expenditure which represent the same graph like uh, and uh, in non consumer expenditure we mainly have taxes and uh, social insurance contributions so it shows that there is not much increment in taxes and social insurance expenditure like it is it is increasing like very less its increment is very less year wise uh Pardon, please. Um, sorry, can I repeat? No, uh, there was a little distortion in your voice. Let me slow, I guess. Can I please repeat, sir? Any coding work? Closing, closing work. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, uh, it will be contained by the shopping work. Um, we used uh, Auto Arima as well, but then uh, what we recommend for uh, the prediction is the time series linear model, and which we conducted for annual data because that is uh, predicting the more accurate one. uh a more accurate data and since we are uh, uh, using uh, this model to predict or uh, to for cost cutting so it will be only the significant uh, significant features for which we will have to survey the data and then predict uh, the expenditure for uh, rest of the years yeah done any questions Yeah, we are taking. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We uh, prefer uh, linear regression more because uh, we had to predict the data based on the multiple uh, independent variables, and since Arima is used for. Uh, Uh, used for uh, predicting the future data based on the historical data, but using a single independent variable. So here we had multiple significant features. So we used linear regression model along with the time series. So it was time series linear regression model, which uh, through which we predicted. and uh, in arima we at least need a uh, 50 to 100 uh, data rows and uh, with the data provided to us was an aggregate data so it it had only 9 to 10 rows so uh, applying arima was not uh, much of a good idea No. Yes, sir. Can you hear, sir? <laughs> okay, sir. Okay. So we are uh, we are presenting the Elinor case. 
so we are i am uh, recommending uh, ranajay to start please yeah uh, the data set we got of the tele uh, this uh, tele not data set it had uh, over this uh, three crores rows uh, so it was not uh, loading in this uh, csv file so we what we did is that uh, we uh, did a sampling of that and just we took the uh, 1 million of the rows uh, just to uh, do the uh, basic uh, this uh, basic operations and all and applied models after that uh, when it uh, means uh, we calculated the percentage of this uh, thing and that uh, we applied this model on the original data set so uh, <coughs> can you hear can you hear me? Okay, sorry, sorry. Um, so, uh, can I start from the beginning? Continue then. Um, so what was saying that uh, we got a, a very big data set of uh, three crore rows. Uh, so what we did is that uh, we uh, did a sampling of that and uh, just took uh, 10,000 of this uh, 10 uh, lakhs means a million of this rows uh, to do this uh, basic uh, operations and all. So uh, this was the uh, original data set uh, rows. So after that, uh, we did a sampling. And then uh, we verified the data and saw that there were no uh, null values and all. Uh, after that, uh, after doing this, uh, our putting the model on this uh, sampling data, uh, we verified the data on this um, original data set, uh, which consisted of our three crore rows. Um, so, modeling. <clears throat> so, uh, we took an assumption uh, that if uh, all of the column uh, delay columns contain zero uh, it is not considered as a fail else if uh, there are all zeros in each and uh, means at least one uh, non zero column uh, rows are there we consider it as a uh, fail so uh, now uh, we will go to the uh, questions uh, which were, we were asked Uh, so as my friend told you that we have divided our data into two uh, two files so that we uh, calculated the number number of top 10 raven fails so by that uh, evaluation we get the brass raven birdie uh, which uh, at the total count of 218372 which is almost 0.7% of the total counts and uh, after that, we calculate the top ravens with 10 without fails. In that, we got the metallic sunburst raven poly as a as a best uh, raven, which have uh, which comes to count of 297. So the family with the most fails is considered as Targaryen uh, counts to 81,54,000. Sorry, uh, it's uh, 81,54,000, and the family with least fails is uh, Lannisters. That counts to 2654. So the family, uh, uh, so the family member. Uh, further, we have uh, filtered it out on the member list, and the member name with with most fails is Petri Balish, and the least uh, fails also it is uh, Petri Balish only. So now we uh, move to modeling part, which my friend Ramesh will tell you. Okay. Uh, so the for the deployment of the uh, model, we used uh, the um, algorithm of Arima, single uh, seasonal Arima. <clears throat> so uh, we uh, we try to approach different. Uh, we try to approach different uh, methodologies like uh, ARCGH model and oligarch models, but uh, we found uh, the seasonal Arima as the best one. So what we did, uh, what we did is uh, we grouped uh, we grouped the total number of uh, raven failures from uh, with the with the respective date then we applied uh, applied arima to it and for uh, the uh, for the uh, for the accuracy part we uh, conducted uh, the elzum test and uh, the other uh, uh, autocorrelation factors and proxy autocorrelation factors so that that that's how we evaluated our, that's how we evaluated our model so you can see, uh, you can see now the. We can see. Yes. 
30 seconds okay uh, so uh, then uh, these are the uh, these are the predictions we got they are the first chart uh, uh, shown here is the uh, time series uh, time series uh, then the decomposition of the time series uh, then we found the residuals uh, with, uh, residuals and uh, these are the tests we did, uh, we did for the finding for the finding the better fit for the data which is l jung box to test and normal qq plot and <clears throat> the, the, uh, these are the respective values uh, which we got and uh, we, and this are, uh, this is the final forecast we, and we came to know that it's um, forecast values which are uh, nearly accurate we are, which are nearly accurate to the testing uh, testing data <coughs> Pardon, sir. Any closing points? Any uh, sir, the closing point would be that uh, uh, the we are we are nearly um, we are have uh, uh, we have uh, we have accumulated the values which are nearly accurate uh, to the testing uh, testing data, and uh, <clears throat> the number of uh, fail the number of failures we found for the four days are um, for the four days are uh, around. Around accurate, around nine lakh fifty thousand and accurate. So this uh, this was our part. Any questions from you, sir? Thank you. Okay. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, sir. Thank you. 